Am I audible? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Nigel. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so I have some issue with the video, so I'm just checking the scene. So just give me some two minutes time to sort out the same, ma'am. All right, all right, no problem. I don't know, some issue. With... No problem. With your permission, I'm rejoining it. Sure, Nikhil, sure. You can drop off and then rejoin.
do we have another AV to play or should we start? Yes, I think, yes, Nigil, uh, your video uh, issues have been very beautifully <laughs> solved. Okay, we have another AV. Team Editors, can we start? Okay. A very good evening to everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Great. So uh, I think we are good to go. Let us start. And uh, yes. Welcome to another webisode of Futuristic Education. And uh, it gives me immense pleasure each time I come here with the Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam team and we deliberate on the trending topics, the paradigm shifts which the education sector is undergoing. And it is so, um, uh, you know, uh, you feel so uh, blessed to work towards and contribute to this journey and make people aware about the changing trends. So let's begin with today's webisode. With the educational technology going through a paradigm shift, as I just mentioned, of the worldwide acceptance, both at the level of leadership and academicians, academia in education sector, we are moving towards incorporating virtual lab options with real-time guidance feedback. You see, while virtual labs aren't a completely new phenomena, they were being created being worked upon for, you know, if not a couple of, then at least a decade or more. I think Nigil will be able to validate this. <laughs> and have been around for quite some time. The access to more advanced virtual learning environment, VLE as they are called, and industry grade equipment has been a more recent trend and has completely revolutionized the education uh, industry. Now, virtual labs today offer students with new and more exciting immersive learning. It gives them experiences leading to better engagement. And the best part is all at their own time pace. So in today's
education by offering an immersive, as I spoke, immersive learning experience to the students. Without much ado, let me come to my most exciting uh, portion of the webinar where I take complete pride in talking about who we are, what we are doing, and introducing my panelists, esteemed panelists. So I'm delighted to welcome to you a, with a new episode of Futuristic Education. These are web series dedicated, as I earlier said, to enlighten and empower the education community in uh, education trends, how things are changing, how we have moved on from say education 1.0, 2.0, and now we are rigorously moving towards education in metaverse, education 5.0. These are a city-based web series where we bring the edu leaders of a particular city. And when I say edu leaders, I have also added an element of our young leaders, yes, our students. Today's city happens to be Gurugram, where the leaders, edu leaders of this city are here to deliberate upon and voice their opinions on the most pertinent issues related to the 21st century education. I am Devyani Kapoor, founder, mentor, EduDevs, upskilling education. I am your host and moderator for the day. Let me tell you, these web series are very thoughtfully curated uh, and uh, for the education world, they are a collaborative initiative of Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam University and Edutaves. Without much ado, let me quickly take this opportunity to introduce to you our esteemed and special panel of the day. Let me reverse the order this time. Yes, I'm so tempted to first introduce our young panelists who are our students and who would be co-moderating or co-hosting the show with me. We have with us this time a young panel of students from Laburnum Public School, Bonsi Gurgaon. We have with us Kanishka Rajput, class 11 student of Laburnum School. We have Kashish Rati, again a student of class 11. And we have our young panelist, Tajil Yadav, a class 10 student of the same school. Welcome, students. The show and the learning will not be complete without your perspective, without you all being around the show. We have with us, and I think we'll be shortly joined by, because I will introduce the person, but since he has requested that he will be joining in another five minutes, we have with us Mr. Trulok Singh Vish, principal and a veteran academician. He's principal Brahmdath Bluebells Public School. Do we have Mr. Trilok Singh Vish here? Has he joined in? Team Edudes, has Mr. Tilok Bish joined in? Okay, moving on to, we has an illustrious career and been a principal of some great institutions from Delhi Public School, Vasundra Ghaziabad, Jodhamal Public School, Jammu Doon International School, Unison World School, Dehradun, and the journey goes on. We welcome you, sir, and I'm awaiting his presence. We have with us another veteran academician, Mr. Yogeshwar Dube, who is Vice Principal Academics in GPS International School, Gurugram, Delhi, MCR. Uh, welcome you, Mr. Yogeshwar Dube. Namaskar, sir. Do we have- Namaskar, Namaskar, everyone. I'm so sorry. I was not getting the unmute. Okay. I think now the host allowed me to unmute. Thank you. 
Namaskar to Lokesh sir. Welcome, welcome. I'm so honored that you are today part of this uh, show. I've you never just a driver in a driver's role up to five minutes before. I've just entered my house and I've just entered the meeting without changing, right? <laughs> welcome, sir. The virtual platform does give us this leverage and liberty to, you know, adjust our screens and, uh, you know, put our best face and the best foot forward. Moving on to our collaborators. Uh, Mr. We have with us from Amrita Vishwamitya Peter, Mr. Miguel. M. He is academic mentor, directorate of admissions and academic outreach from Amrita Vishwamitya Peter. Mr. Nigel comes with almost five years of experience in teaching and career counseling. He has great expertise in handling technical sessions with current trends in technology. His areas of interest include power electronics, renewable energy, and smart grid, artificial intelligence, and robotics. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Nigel. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for the warm welcome. Great. <laughs> Moving on to our eyes breaking uh, question, just to put everyone on the same platform. I shall begin with Mr. Strilokbish. Moving on to Mr. Nigil. And we are awaiting joining of Mr. Yogeshwar. Uh, and we will, as he comes, I'm going to reintroduce and we will rope him in. And then the ice breaking question will be uh, also addressed to uh, one of the student panelists. Uh, team uh, Edudis, could we have our, uh, you know, mute, uh, put uh, the rest of, uh, except for our panelists, put the others on mute because it is creating a little bit of incident. Moving on to uh, Trilok Bishji, I'm extremely excited to have you and heard so much about you even before you joining in here. We've done a lot of sessions together and we look forward to our journey, collaborative journey with Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, Edudes and Brahmdad Bluebell Schools to continue. So my question to you is, uh, in your opinion, you know, we've been talking about these virtual labs and simulations, and uh, of course, they were not a new thing, but yes, they've suddenly picked up with the paradigm shift in, uh, you know, the education sector. So how might virtual labs and simulations, do you think, would reshape the STEM education particularly? But by and large, you can also talk about the rest. And the skills of the students, which, uh, what are the skills that will be honed due to this, uh, they being in the digital era? G, sir. Thank you so much. First of all, Namaskar to everyone. It is such a wonderful thing that, you know, after driving for seven hours and straight away, uh, to talk to all of you and you know uh, the topic which you've taken is such a wonderful one it's really uh, as per the need of the hour it's is there a today's child today's student sir you may mute sir you may natives. Uh, we as teachers have been just a nomad and the gypsies we have been trying to wander around and learn from our children. I from the children. So I think uh, children. Yes, am I audible or not? So your voice you is lagging. Your voice is audible? lagging. If you could uh, put in your practice. video off, uh, you could put your video off and then maybe put it on because the bandwidth. Yes, sir. Yes. Is it better now? Is it better? Definitely, definitely. Yes. So I would just say that I was saying that today's students are digital natives actually, and they are fundamentally different from the students of our time. When we were the students, we were different altogether, mainly due to uh, their immersions and the technologies and media such as video games, YouTube, action films. As a result, students in 21st century should have a different learning goals and therefore require different teaching approaches. 
the integration and effective use of technology is fundamental in an information age and a knowledge based society technology uses no longer just an option for the children rather not even for the teachers but a fundamental literacy this is what we feel that we all have to learn as teachers as well as students and today's education leaders and administrators are challenged with the important task of creating the your voice is lagging again. The voice is lagging. To make learning more accessible while providing support equivalent to students in traditional classroom settings. When technology is designed with both Sir, your voice is lagging. Wish, sir, Am I your... audible or not? The voice is lagging. Am I audible? Sir. Now you are, but uh, in, initially it was Hello. lagging. No, it's Am lagging. Am I audible? Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, sir, uh, I'm audible. Uh, I'm lagging. Uh, I had shown Wi-Fi ka password though. Wi-Fi, just give me a minute. No problem. I'll move on to Nigil and then come back to you, sir. So, yes, Nigil, what is your uh, take on this particular thing? Yeah. Uh, I just want to start with my story, actually. No, I'm, I'm an average student, actually. I have joined, even I'm an alumni of Amrita. I have joined there for Master of Education MTech. But I don't tell this will help master student, UG or school students. Uh, the project work, it's an important thing in each and everyone's individual's life. Mm -hmm. uh, even the school students or UG or PG, whatever it may be, uh, we have to showcase our skills through this project work. So directly going to this hardware part, simulations and virtual lab will give you an idea what uh, what what you can do with your skills or the, what you have learned from the theoretical sessions. It's, it's just an introductory part or else it's a pathway to the practical session. So that is the first point I just want to mention. Uh, from there, you can understand whether you will achieve your objective successfully in the hardware session. Because if we directly go to the hardware designing, the major thing is like the cost. So we can reduce the cost if you go with the simulations part or the virtual lab. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to interpret you in between, Nigel. But yeah. uh, because could you just let us know the difference between these two terms, virtual lab and simulation? So how does this, and then maybe you could move on because lots of people would, I was finding it little difficult. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, See, for example, maybe like I can show you a video. So now we don't have that much time. So that's why if if I show that, it will be better and you will be understand easily. Uh, so the simulation means it's already will download some software and it will be like there are different blocks will be there. For example, uh, if you take the physics subjects, resistor, capacitor, each one will have different values. And we will be inserting the resistor value, capacitor, and even this conduct, I mean, like whatever the components required, we will just drag and move to this uh, software, I mean, like the platform, and we will connect it, just we'll connect one by, I mean, like dragging this and we'll connecting the same, and we'll understand how it is working. So this is how like a, a software part, see, it's a, it's a simple software, it will work how in our I mean, like different laboratory experiment which we can do and basically it's not for all the subjects it won't work and this is how like a simulation works and virtual lab in the sense this almost the concept is same uh, see for example like if we are interactable for example the student will be interactable to this say for example how vr works virtual assistant works same way it's virtual lab will works and it will be interactive and giving the suggestions and even giving the instructions to the student, those who are working it. And it will automatically fetch us the information from the student and it will adjust the 
software and it will predict the output. So this is what happening in this virtual lab and the simulation, even almost the output part and the uh, final prediction will be seen. It will help the student to understand what is happening in uh, it like I told practical sessions, what is happening? They can feel same way. They can feel what is happening with some less cost. And for example, if uh, so many schools are feeling like the cost and the budget will be very high. So if we have some software so which will help with this uh, simulation part and if they purchase, they can able to make the student understand easily these things and even they can learn it in an easier way. Simply by hearting the theory won't work out. So that is the first thing. And second thing is like collaboration and group activity. Even we can give the students as an different assignments like simply we are giving one topic to the students, like write an assignment about this topic. We can give an assignment to uh, prepare a sim simple simulation or this project and they can work together. They can work from any location, any time they can work. It's not strictly in the school. Hour. For example, if you go for the hardware lab, it is like they can work upon a, only on the school hours. I know it's very tough in the school. I mean, like syllabus or curriculum, they will get only hardly three hours in a week for this physics, chemistry, or the other labs. So if we have something in simulation or this tools, the student can work at their own time and they can produce it as an assignment. So it's an optional. And next thing is like uh, cost effective, which I told, and I just want to tell you one more thing, just a minute I have, uh, and this uh, experimental learning. Again, it will give a feel of an experiment. So that is the third point, which I want to tell you. And integration. See, the integration won't work out in the hardware thing. For example, if we want to integrate some things with the physics and the other things in the higher level integrations won't happen in the practical sessions directly, the student do the hardware. So in the software part or else in the simulation, uh, virtual lab and simulation allows this for different type of integration of different tools that is simply possible in this uh, virtual lab and simulations and even the changes which is happening in the current scenario even the day by day there are a lot of researches are happening and even technology is finding new new solutions the updation can be done easily with the with this because you know the day each and every sector is like developing and even there are a lot of changes are happening so this cannot be done if suppose if school is purchasing some hardware component and they are working upon the same or the lab uh, if sudden changes happen again, they need to switch or change the component. So this it's not required in the part of this uh, virtual lab and simulations thing. So they can easily adapt the changes of the technology which is happening in the current scenario. So these are the major, uh, I mean, like benefit of this virtual lab and simulations, which can be given to the students in the school life or not in the school life, even in their entire life, even if it's UG, PG or whatever they go. Okay, sorry, one of the participants was asking us to show us, uh, is it very long a journey of the virtual lab, maybe during the course of this, when I come back to you, will you be able to take us through a virtual lab? Uh, sure, maybe like I can show you one uh, simulation part, maybe like MATLAB, it's a simulation tool, it's a simulating tool, which can I can show you, uh, is please. it fine, can I show now? Please, please, uh, and then I move on to... Uh, uh, Sorry, sir is, sir, is, sir is telling something. No, no, sir will get a so, uh, good uh, you know, time because I want to take his perspective from there. I want to finish up with that. You please share and then... Sure, I'll... sure, sure. sure. Uh, before that, I will introduce... I, I just want to tell about the tool. No, I can't directly show to the tool. MATLAB, it's like a tool uh, which is like programming. It's also possible and as well as simulations. It's a beautiful tool for the students to understand and learn how simulation and this comp each component works, whatever things which we learn in the physics. Okay. For example, we can place the uh, block and we can see how it will work. So I can, I will share, I will share my screen and I will explain that is better actually. Does sir have the rights to share a screen? Yes, yes, yes. It's opening now. Uh, I hope everyone can see this screen. Yes. Yes. No. Okay. 
so uh, this is a just demo video so i just i don't want to play the entire video it's like yeah maybe just a little bit you could yeah, yeah sure 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 so is it audible I'm great how are you i'm doing yeah. good excellent can you tell us a little yes. bit more about yourself yes so my name is karanjot singh and i am an application engineer at mathworks and i support simulink so actually i have a simulink model prepared for the infusion pump so why don't we jump right into the model that sounds great so today we will show you how you can design and develop algorithms using simulink but first of all let's go ahead and simulate the system so this is a model of an infusion pump now infusion pump is a device that is usually operated by a nurse and the goal of this device is to automatically deliver medicine to the patient at regular intervals so basically what we have in the simulink model is on the left hand side you have the input commands provided by the nurse you have the control algorithm this is what we are designing and developing and then you have the plant model which is basically represents a model of the physical hardware that you have and this is what we are trying to control now as you can see the simulation is already running in the background and it has been running for a few seconds now let's go ahead and visualize the results of the simulation now what are what are we looking at right now so this graph represents the pressure in the delivery line so as you can see as the medicine is delivered to the patient there's a sudden spike in pressure and then it goes back down to some base value and this goes on for a little bit but at the end something weird starts to happen where the pressure just keeps on building up now this really goes on to show the real power of simulation and simulink where you can build and simulate your algorithms and see how they behave and you can in using these analysis and these results you can fine tune our system and even correct some of the design errors which otherwise you would have found in expensive prototypes that you have built but before we go into details of how we can design the systems and probably fix errors like this let's take a step back and look at the agenda that we have for today so today we are going to start by getting an overview of simulink so from this i can actually you can see the different blocks which is like uh, the different blocks whatever we require we can place here you can see this controller is there actually again the controller part i think 6th standard 7th standard students buy this controller to do some project the same thing is happening here we don't need to buy the component initially they can try with this the simulation and they can place it as a block and the entire part will work like how and hardware works and they will show you how it will run and how it will give the output so this is uh, just they have connected this then we will move on to so look into let me move to little bit so that and up here i have the tool strip which uh, a block or a model element the tool strip shows me capabilities in the context of the work that i'm doing so you see that I, here i get specific capabilities for that block that i selected and if i grab multiple blocks then that changes to give me actions that are available for those blocks or multiple blocks that i selected all right so now let's go ahead and build our motor model if we go back to the library browser let's go ahead and try to find some so this is the library and you can see the different type of sensors motor generators even all the equipment which we do in the laboratory which will be available so the just we need to go to library and we have to drop that thing to this our screen that's it that is our duty and we can connect the components each other and we'll see how it is working and how it is giving the output great thank you so much nigil thank you so much for sharing i'm sure the our participants who have joined here with an interest uh, they would be uh, and i can see so, the interest in that that people are asking, let me show you but because of the paucity of time we will we will do a master class on this our sure, step sure. at uh, you know nep and uh, classes of course we always look for having let me now again introduce you to mr trilok singh bish principal brahmdath bluebells public school he has an illustrious career and he has the privilege of working with certain prestigious institutions of the country like 
Delhi Public School, Vasundra Gaziabad, Jodhamal Public School, Jammu Dune International School, Unison World School, Dehradun, and so on. I can, I can see is the recipient of National Teachers Award 2016-17. We welcome you, sir, here. And now we would uh, you know, love to hear your thoughts on the ice-breaking question as to you know, how does this virtual labs and simulation reshape the future of the STEM education? And what are the skills that these labs are going to hone in our students? Ji, sir, over to you. Namaskar once again. Actually, you know, I came back and I couldn't go to my house. I stopped in between to one of my friends' house. So I've taken their uh, Wi-Fi now. I hope I'm clearer now. Ji, sir. Ji, sir. <laughs> So what I was saying was the virtual labs and simulation have become increasingly popular in enhancing the STEM education today. We, we are uh, people who are not uh, native, uh, natives, uh, digital natives actually. So we are also learning with the passage of time as principal, as teachers, we also have to open up our mind to learn the thing. And uh, this uh, virtual lab and simulations are becoming so popular these days in the STEM education through the immersive experiences. These tools offer the students a unique opportunity to engage themselves uh, in the hands-on learning and experimentation, uh, regardless of their physical location. If it is a lab, there is uh, only one period in a week. They can go there, they can have the uh, practices and uh, after that, there's no, uh, you know, they cannot follow it up properly because they'll have to wait for next period. Next period may be on a holiday. See, the one week, we've got one period for uh, practical. Next week, I have a practical period, but that particular day on that week becomes a holiday. So how do I continue with, how do I do immersive practices with the help of uh, physical lab? So therefore, I believe these, uh, um, you know, kind of virtual labs are really going to help. And these tools will offer the children a unique opportunity to um, engage themselves in the hands-on experiences. And here are some ways which I believe can uh, help the students through the virtual labs for simulations through the STEM education. First is access to the realistic experiments. Virtual labs provide students with the access to realistic experiments that may be otherwise very costly, can be very dangerous at times, or impractical to conduct in a traditional laboratory setting. Therefore, through the virtual simulations, students can perform experiments in a controlled and a very safe environment, allowing them to explore a wide range of scientific concepts and uh, phenomena. Second point which comes to my mind is flexibility and convenience. They don't have to wait for next week. It's quite flexible. In the, in the, you know, in the evening also, when they are free, they can uh, get into this and get their work done. They can be very flexible and convenient because virtual labs and simulations offer the flexibility in terms of scale, uh, scheduling and access. Students can engage in their experiments at their own pace and uh, convenience, accommodating different learning uh, styles and the preferences which they have. Additionally, virtual labs eliminate the geographical uh, constraints. The geographical constraints, constraints are also being taken away by this uh, virtual lab, enabling the students from anywhere in the world to connect with their friends in the other part of the world and do the same experiment and same simulation. Third point is enhanced visualization. Visual, virtual simulations often include the visualizations and interactive elements that help students better understand complex scientific concepts. These visuals representation, visual representations can make the abstract concepts more tangible and easier to grasp, improving students' comprehension and retention of the information. They will not have much of the problem because they will be able to see it what is happening? You know, in the class, when we are doing it in a physical lab, one teacher is telling, and 40 children are listening to him, and they're watching it from a distance. They cannot 
have those simulations, simulations which they can have to the virtual lab. I believe virtual education has become quite uh, convenient for the children. It is going to really help each and every child because you know it'll be a personalized education will be there. It will not be one teacher teaching all 40 children. How many of them understanding? The teacher himself or herself doesn't know. Whereas for the virtual labs, the children will understand. Wherever they are not able to understand, they can rewind. They can rewind, play it again, see twice, thrice, four times. I think that is going to make a big difference to the children. Immediate feedback and the iterative learning is becoming very easy with this because the virtual labs and simulations can provide immediate feedback to the students based on their actions and decisions during the experiments. Simultaneously, the feedback will keep coming to the child. Child will know, oh, I was faltering here. I should go back again and I can do this again. So this feedback allows the students to learn from their mistakes and make adjustments and iterate their approaches, posting a deeper understanding of the underlying principles and the promoting a scientific mindset amongst the children. I think these are very, very important pointers. And one more very important pointer is the collaboration and communication. You know, in the class, collaboration and communication becomes a problem at times, but virtual labs can facilitate collaborative learning experiences amongst the students. They can work together on shared experiments, discuss observations, and exchange ideas through the online platform to the virtual classroom. Such collaborative environments encourage active participation, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and the development of the teamwork skills. They can all come onto the, uh, you know, they can come to the MS Teams or any platform virtually. They can uh, run the virtual lab. They can uh, look at the experiment. Together they can have their observations. They can collaborate. They can talk about, they can discuss about it. Then they can come with something most, uh, you know, something which is going to be beneficial to all of them together. In the school, there's not much of the time for the children to get into the things altogether. I think this virtual labs, even in the school, if they are being used, every child is sitting on a computer and they're all doing it together, will make a collaborative learning and feedback to be much easier. And they will be having communication with each other. And at times, peer-to-peer -peer learning makes it better than the teacher-to-student learning. Teachers at times become very adamant. What I'm saying is right. You have to do it this way. But, Sooth, you want me to stop? Yeah, no, no. I want to uh, take your conversation now to another, uh, add on another angle to it. So what Mr. Bish said, absolutely extremely relevant and simple explanation about if I could understand being a non-STEM person, everybody would be able to understand because he spoke about the simple skills, the kind of realistic experience, experiences that the child gets. The, it is at its convenience, his own speed, the environment is safe. But most importantly, he spoke about the collaborative uh, you know, activity and the communicative because something that definitely what Mr. Bish said was at times the, these skills, because there's one way, you know, transaction of knowledge happening. It's a very passive mo model. So this gives a very, very active learning spaces to the students. Sir, I would like you to continue on another uh, level that how uh, do you think that the role of the teacher is evolving with increased integration of virtual labs and simulations in the classroom first does your school provide that environment and space where you you people are using virtual labs and simulations to yes the student actually with technology the problem is that student is very very hands-on it's the teacher who needs to kind of evolve and better their skills. So how do you see the role of teacher changing in this whole setup, sir? Jesus. We, um, in our school, we have the virtual labs as well, but we have the real labs as well. So experimentation and exploration, whether we talk with the virtual labs, provide the students with the freedom to explore various parameters and experiments with different uh, settings without a fear of damaging the equipment or causing any harm to any of the equipment. I'm in somebody's house and there's a lot of noise you can see. Can, 
अच्छा अभी अभी मैं गाड़ी चेंज करता हूँ आपकी खाली मुझे नहीं पता आपकी कौन सी पार्किंग जो है उसे पार्किंग कर दी हम सो सॉरी आप कम टू सोसाइटी एंड द सोसाइटी यू पार्क एट समबडी स्पेस दे कम ओवर नो प्रॉब्लम सर दैट्स द ब्यूटी ऑफ द वर्चुअल कम्युनिटी दैट वी आर डेवलपिंग वी आर बिकमिंग मोर एम्पैथेटिक we value each other's time we value each other's situations i think that's yeah. the real world that and if we cannot empathize with you then you know so, uh, sir, thing, i was the... traveling i was traveling for 7 hours but since i made a commitment to edudev so i thought i need to join edudev in the middle of the way meeting my neighbors uh, on the way in gaziabad i stopped at go to gurugram so i am here only and from here i have joined you what i want to say what your question was madam thoda kam bolne mujhe baat kar lene dijiye na ha yes <clears throat> uh what i was saying was uh, when you asked the question how is the role of the teachers changing with this um, uh, virtual labs coming up so i believe uh, experimentation exploration through the virtual labs are very good because they really save the children children don't have the fear of spoiling the uh you can say the damaging the equipment so causing any harm to the physical laboratory and all because they are doing only on the physical virtual world in the virtual lab nothing can be spoiled all together you know but the teachers role is changing because teachers have to be you know fitting themselves into the physical labs as well they also have to change their mindset till the time the teacher doesn't change this mindset we will not be able to bring the change all together this uh, kind of uh, when teachers also get into this they will be able to they'll encourage the curiosity creativity and independent thinking posting a sense of scientific inquiry and discovery amongst the children i also believe while virtual labs and simulations offer numerous benefits to stem education and teachers are going to be role models for them and the teachers will have to update themselves as well but at the same time they should not completely replace the traditional laboratory experiences because at time when you touch the feel touch and feel the thing that also gives you know it should be a add on it should not be totally subtracted altogether uh, eliminated from their life you know the physical laboratory should not happen physical lab still plays a crucial role in certain experiments that require direct interaction with the materials and equipment however so, when combined with traditional method virtual labs and simulation can com- uh, complement and enhance the stem education they can be complementary to each other and teachers role will be to connect the two things together so the children can understand what they've done in the school how they go back and through the virtual labs how do they understand it better much better what right. i believe virtual labs will be definitely an add on but at the same time we cannot forget the traditional ways out So we have to keep a balance as teachers. Teachers will be required to keep the balance, and education by providing a broader range of learning opportunities and preparing students for the ever-evolving demand for the STEM education or the STEM field through the virtual lab is very, very important. And for this, definitely, the teachers will have to change their perspective. They'll have to change their mindset because that it's all here. teacher feels till the time child will not go to the lab he will not understand but there are certain experiments where it's absolutely important for the children to go to the lab and feel the equipment but there mm-hmm. are many lab equipment and many experiments are there where the children does do not need to go to the lab the virtual lab can make it much better i tell you an example of a biology lab the other day my teacher was teaching them the heart and you know when they teach it in their lab they have only a model is there equipment is there heart is there she can open and show them but mm-hmm. then i saw this on the 3d uh, lab of ours i could see the way they were opening up how the pulmonary and how the uh, you know oxygen how the you know all the four walls were shown and they were opening up properly that was a virtual experience were altogether different it was mm-hmm. so realistic actually we call mm-hmm. it virtual lab but that mm-hmm. is more realistic than the real uh, labs all together i think so the teacher was teaching them she was connecting it so beautifully so teacher is a connect between the virtual lab and the children if she takes it in the toto if she is actually interested rather than depending all the time no teachers are more important 
we can do it much better but as a teacher i understand we are this virtual i'm going to make it more important for the children so it depends on the teacher how the teacher is going to take it up right thank you so much thank you thank you so much sir uh moving on to let me take the perspective of the student because we sitting here in the universities heads of uh, institutions we can talk about it but let's hear how students are uh, experiencing let me speak to uh, uh, kanishk uh, rajput kanishka rajput and my question to you is that uh, can you share an experience where you felt a concept was better explained when you were using a virtual uh, lab or a simulation which kind of significantly enhanced your understanding of any particular concept do you have any memory of it sure ma'am but firstly i would like to express my gratitude towards the entire team of edudev and towards ms divyani kapoor thank you ma'am for having me here and thank you for allowing me to be the part of the mandators group for today now coming up on to your question firstly i would like to talk about virtual labs and stimulations virtual labs and stimulations for me are very powerful tools that can be used to enhance our knowledge specifically on stem subjects and for my experience science is a subject of great interest and i have a lot more interest in biology so we were first to introduced to the topic of circulation in class first at that time we were introduced to the functioning of heart in the books and we used to see the functioning of heart and the circulation process with the help of diagrams mm. and that's when we i started imagining all those things in my mind but now due to the availability of virtual labs i can see all those things in front of my eyes in a very organized manner and i can understand them much better Kanishka, is, are you using Kanishka? Are you using virtual labs in your school? Is there the provision of virtual lab, or you are using it on your own? Any lab that you are using, virtual lab? Ma'am, actually, I am using Lab Exchange, and I am using it at, on my own perspective. Very good. I think Kanishka, we had Kanishka who says that she is taking that initiative because definitely, children do feel that they have. uh they want those immersive experiences so and with mr bish talking about that there has to be a happy blend of physical labs and the virtual labs moving on to digil digil my question to you is that uh how could you know what measures can be taken to because we understand that cyber using these virtual labs could create a uh, cyber security and handling of digital or probably there is digital trespassing data theft or something do you think that some measures can be taken to ensure data privacy or is it related to virtual labs do you think these two can be connected data security privacy uh, while the students are using these virtual labs any message you would like to give to them that yes yes first of all i would like to uh tell that teacher should learn what exactly happening maybe like we should give a good training to the teacher how a simulation lab works and what are the advantages and teacher should learn that and teacher should understand that concept and any security as you are telling about the data issues actually all the things what we do digitally it's data data it's playing a biggest role in all the sector so data security it's most important thing so as a teacher or a as a guide we have to understand how the simulation tool works and what are the issues which is happening and after we i mean done with the same we can move on the same to the students so that is the first step and second thing is like we have to update our laptop or the software with the updated security things and we have to keep on updating our system with the all the security Thing so that we don't have any theft or any attacks will happen. Cyber attacks it can happen any time, anywhere with any simulation tool or any software. It is like students don't know what they are doing, and even if some notification comes, they will click and they will forward, and they won't understand what's happening. So it is our duty, or a mentor, or a teacher's duty to check whether all the things are fine, and even we need to update our system with proper security and the system at that time. That is regarding the security part and issues. If we 
rectify that and we have to and again the feedback system is there so we have some beautiful feedback system and we can connect with the uh, vendors and we can connect with the people who have designed this and if there is any issues with the related to the security or the practical things uh, after that we can go to the next step if suppose they are asking for some payment or any anything even if we are getting a lot of messages so they will get a lot of notifications or message anyhow the 24 i mean like the tech team will be there even if you purchase any simulation or tools so they will support us for any reason so we don't need to worry about those things so we can check with them and after that we can go ahead with the next steps if we are feeling any uncomfortableness in using the tools and as a teacher so i would like to suggest teacher need to give training and moreover that after the students work uh, even the teachers have to check the feedback and the suggestions from the students and maybe like that can be done for the assessment purpose also the teacher can assist the student with that so teacher can able to view what the student have learned and understand and even this will help this teaching learning process in a positive way great thank you so much uh, nigel i think this whole becomes very important that the teacher has to also learn about this yes now i hand over uh, the stage and this platform to our student panelists and uh, kanishka who've been waiting and kanishka rajput kashish rati and kajal yadav and uh, considering that they are part of our internship program and they've been mentored and we ensure that their communicative and moderating and collaborative skills, research skills are honed. So uh, Kanishka, Kashish and Kajal, the platform is open to you. But I think Mr. Bish is dropping out because naturally he was driving back. He has to drive back from Ghaziabad to Gurugram. So I would like you to, you know, as much as you can, rope in Nigil, sir, and take the best, you make the best use of what he says. You can also address the question to the audience. All the stage is open to you. And I'm sure, Nikhil, you're going to have some great time with these students. Over yes. to you, Tanishka, Kashish, and uh, yeah. Over to you, students. Yes, ma'am. A very good evening, everyone accumulated here today. May this time of tranquility and reflection replenish your spirits and bring serenity to your hearts. Thank you, Divyani, ma'am, for giving us this opportunity and special thanks to Edu Intern for giving this wonderful platform. It's a pleasure for me to be part of this. I'm so glad that you brought up this as it is such an important and fascinating topic. It's me, Kajal Yadav, and I would like to question panelist Mr. Nigel, sir. So your expertise in this subject is highly regarded. Could you please say, uh, share your notions on how realistic are these virtual labs and simulations in comparison to the real world life laboratory experiences? Do they actually depict real world scenarios? We would love to hear your valuable insights, sir, please. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, actually, all those things comes from the part of the, we need to check the learning outcomes, right? Uh, we have to compare the learning outcomes achieved by the student using virtual lab and simulation and even the traditional lab experience. So even we can compare the result, the study result of those students and we can have a nice uh, understanding how this is benefiting. So that is the first thing. And second thing is like uh, the retention of knowledge and even the skill development. Uh, we can evaluate the students' skills based on the tools, which we can introduce some tools to the students, even this virtual or simulation. So we can able, we need to check what are the different skills which is developed in the students using this, using, I mean, with the help of this virtual lab or else the simulation comparing with the traditional lab things. And next is like, as I told already, the sir have mentioned the collaboration and the student engagement and obviously, uh, the accessibility so student can access anywhere and we can work upon the same at any time and next thing is like we need to understand the students feedback whether students are satisfied and they are able to understand the same so the teacher have to support the student and teacher need to verify the students feedback and we have to be update the things if suppose it's not fine we have to switch to other 
tools because there are a lot of tools available and even this ai is supporting this lab ai tool i mean like ai tool is supporting this virtual lab as well as the simulation so i think in future we'll get a lot of tools which will be supported for all the subjects and even uh, the transferability of the skills and it will provide a comparative studies as i already told it will integrate different tools or the different subjects so that the students will get more exposure to the things so ultimately so it will be benefiting the students but with the proper guidance of the things we have to give to the students thanks very nicely explained sir and uh, i uh, i want to just share that the whole thing around uh, between the students that if the student get feedback is satisfied or they are satisfied with these virtual labs then we will move forward the whole technological world will move forward in this way. Yeah. yes thank you sir continuing after my co-host co-moderator kajal yadav first and foremost i would like to express the words of gratitude to editive and especially the vyani kapoor ma'am because as this webinar is a great way out for us to explore fantastically with edu intern a good teacher can inspire hope ignite the imagination and instill a love of learning so i wholeheartedly thank the vyani ma'am and nigel sir supporting us explaining us so nicely and giving us this opportunity to just interact with you all and get more and more knowledge about everything so i have question for nigel sir uh, to just take his views on that i would like to ask him that are there opportunities for us to collaborate or work on group projects within these virtual environments yes you have see it is same like how you will work in a group in the practical sessions and you people will work in the physics lab chemistry lab but the major issue which is facing there is lack of time and you will have some assert told one hour two hour just two hours only you will get but in this lab even it's a group activity you can have a simulation window that can be shared with three or four members so those four people can access the window and they can edit the same and finally they can work upon the same and they can see final maybe like the final step they can sit together in any place okay and they can work and they can see how this is works and you can interact and even even you can interact and you can collaborate and you can put your ideas and you can learn together in a group and moreover that it will improve your collaboration and the, even the communication skills so it will ben it will automatically improve your skills but has sir suggested ultimately i will suggest after the simulation you have to go for the practical session practical session in the sense you have to do the hardware things also then only you will get the feel of the things or the feel of the product which we are handling for example sensor motor or this uh, small small controllers even i have seen that i have traveled a lot to different schools they have seen that 600 700 and students have started using this controllers and they have learned to do the coding so ultimately they will start with the simulations and they can switch over to this hardware part so i would like each and everyone to explore both the simulation and this and this hard software part as well as the hardware part because the result will be different the result from the Uh, software or the simulation part won't be same from the hardware okay uh, i mean it won't be accurate as same as the both result obviously variations will be there and certain parameters have to consider so simulation will give an idea how this will i mean like work or else how it will make you understand more than this theory what you have learned and hardware part will give you a perfect idea or else perfection in this tools and how this component works and designing part which you can learn through this hardware designing okay yeah i think i got so much of clarity i'm sure the people who are related to tech i mean i yes moving on to uh and i would like to introduce one virtual lab to students it's amruta v lab okay so it's a free of course they can just i i will share the screen so that like they can understand more because i think students are asking for some link or for some uh, you know some platform a lab if you could share also the link yeah yeah sure sure and uh, you know we could just have nigel could we just have take one last question and then we could you could just conclude the session by sharing oh sure sure sure, sure sure 
yeah, I think the, the student panelist is waiting for another question. So uh, who is supposed to be asking the last question? Is it Kashish? I'm at to Kanishka. Okay, please go ahead. Now moving forward, I would like to ask a question to Mr. Negan. So please answer. What advice would you give to a person who is new at virtual labs so that he could make the most out of his resources and could his enhance his knowledge on STEM subjects? Please, sir. Uh, if you are new to the things means, I will suggest you have to go with some guide or mentor because you can directly register or you can do this without guide or mentor. But obviously you will have some uh, demo versions available. You can first register for demo and you can learn how this is working. And using the demo, I mean, like you will learn what are the different type of tools. But I will suggest, uh, because anyway, your teacher will be good in that or else you can give ask her suggestions to start with which topic or else you can start with some small small projects not like uh, going to the higher levels so that you will understand first of all you will understand you have to understand what is this tool and it is a tool actually or else it is a software so how it will works and what are the different types of blocks it have and how it will work and how it will run and give you the output and even what are the uh, uh, errors or else when you are working the errors it's an important thing so you have to catch the error so you will have some solution to catch the error also so maybe like you can trial and you can give some trial and error methods to check whether you have working in a proper platform or the proper uh, way after the confirmation from your teacher or the head or else you can share the same with the respective team so they will give you the advice and maybe like after that you can move forward and you it will improve your stem subject as well as all the things like what you learn in the theoretical maybe like you can use that topics to be integrated with the simulation and you can integrate and you can learn and even you can get the guidance from the teacher so this is how maybe you can start with your simulation process so once if you are adapted the same it will it's in your hand. You can explore the scene. Nobody's, I mean, like support is required. The only thing is like, if you are down or if you have felt any mistake, you can just share the scene with the teacher and teacher can help you at any time. No need to wait. I mean, like until this to be sorted out, you can also check with those things. And even online, if you search something in the Google itself, that will give you an answer, better answer if your teacher is busy or else. It, so it won't waste your time so it's up to you you can explore this there are a lot of options are available even a lot of tools available so yeah thank you so much uh Nigel, sir, for the answer and uh, now could you please give a demo i think are we done the student panelists let me not uh you know with that not without their permission uh student panelists <laughs> are we yes because you know, they are yes. the stoppers of today's. Uh, and that's a beautiful element, I think, that uh, Amrita Vishwavidya teacher and Edudez have jointly added to these webinars to bring in the student perspective. Because after all, everything that is being done, all that the ships that we are talking about is for the student only. So, Kanishka, Kashish, can we all, can we hand over the platform to Nigel, sir? so that we can share some of the... Yes, ma'am. Okay. Over to you, Nigel. Yes, yes, yes. So I would like to introduce our own tool. I mean, like Amrita's virtual lab. So it is purely for the students and even for the teachers, they can explore this. So I just want to open the screen. So you can see here, it's login ID is vlab.amrita.edu. So I will share the same in the chat box. Uh, so you can see that virtual lab at Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam, biotechnology and biomedical engineering, chemical sciences, physical sciences, computer science, mechanical engineering. So this is, don't feel that this topic is very high, but it's, it's purely designed for school students and for the UG students. So the technologies here, will you will have different type of animations, videos, remote trigger simulations. So these are the tools which you will get explored or which you can use. And even 
you will get a free demo if you register here okay so it's a free of course you can register here and you will get a free demo and moreover that i just want to show you one more screen so that like you will understand more and here you can see that uh, one of the model neuron model is like they have explained so you can see that it will beautifully explain like how what is what are neurons neuron neural function in even neural modeling so here it the modeling will be done and finally it will go to the objective and the note will be given so next thing is like procedure and how to do this project so it will explain the procedures and even the evaluation it can be like this uh, it is a small objective type test and which you can understand and give the answer and it will give you the uh, feedback also and next thing is like animation and the simulator uh, which is like for the login people so i didn't log in so maybe like uh, you can just check that and you can see how it will so again you can, from the screen you can see that it is like uh, sorry uh, how it have been connected like pulse this uh, capacitor or the resistor everything how it will works and this will be given a virtual idea to the students and this is like completely free of course you can register here as i told free online demo you will get after that you can log in with your email ids and as a teacher or educator they can try this and they can also share the same tool to the students yeah maybe i can share this link in the chat box it will be really helpful sir thank you and if you could miguel i'll you know post the link of this in the chat box i think that yes, yes. is a great help to our... I'm, po I'm posting the link immediately. Yeah, I think I have posted the link. I hope everyone can view the link. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nigel, and uh, the other panelists who could join our viewers. And finally, I hand over again the uh, platform. And to... One more thing, ma'am, I don't yeah. want to add up because it's not like one hour we can explain the entire thing. That's like uh, we have different type of tools for each subject. So I know there are a lot of questions have been came, but maybe in future, if in some other sessions, we can take each subject, maybe like each, uh, each tool, I can give you a good idea, even mathematics tool and even this physics, even everything like each have specific tools, which, which are using in so many schools. So maybe in the future session, I can give you a better idea regarding the same. Yeah. Absolutely, Nigel. I have noted it down that in our STEM at NEP series, uh, we are going to, you know, because if there is so much of demand, we will ensure audience that we are going to integrate this particular, like uh, sir is saying, Nigel sir is saying that, you know, the each subject has separate tools. So we will ensure that you get the full benefit of whatever is being, on, uh, you know, offered. Thank you so much. And over to you, our panelists, uh, student panelists. Today, I would like you people to do the final vote of thanks. The students from Laburnum Public School, uh, being the moderators and the co-hosts for today, will conclude the session. Thank you so much from my end. Over to you, student panel. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving this opportunity, being present here as moderator, as well as like panelists. And thank you for giving this opportunity to share our views because it is to our and we use the STEM technology, we use virtual labs and thank you for taking our feedback because if we will tell these things, you could do more. And there is no real ending for these kind of sessions and we thank and we expect many more webinars and uh, thank you all the eminent guests for being here and making this a great webinar once again. And we will have many more uh, like these in future. And this will enhance our learning knowledge and retention power. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the student fraternity of Liburnum Public School, Bonsi. If you also want to take part in the webinar as the student moderators, please join in as Edwin Turn. Get your skills honed be mentored under us experts and be part of our journey to bring in the path to witness this paradigm shift that's happening in the education sector. Thank you so much. And I urge the students of Lebanon Public School to be part of our podcast series 
the bath cheat cafe which we are the which is our next product which we would like it's a student initiative it's a youth initiative and we would like the student community to wholeheartedly be part of the uh, bath cheat cafe a podcast for uh, you know uh, a youthful podcast of love laughter and crushing life hurdles turning problems into lols thank you so much and uh, team editors are we playing the av if the sound system is fine and yes the student moderators you shall soon receive the hard copies of your beautiful certificates with your pictures on that and i just want to add kajal kashish and kanishka you have done a great job <laughs> It was nice. Thank you so much, sir. I must say, coming on the. Email today is there is a problem with your sound system? No problem. Thank you so much, all our panelists, viewers. Keep writing to us on info at edudays.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Keep remaining updated with our endeavors together with Amrita Vishwavidapitam to bring in the shifts and the changes that are happening in the education field. Thank you so much. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, Rigil, for joining in. Thank you, all our student panelists. Thank you, Al. Thank you so much.